Okay, please get your notes for Chapter 7. This is Section 5 on Rational Exponents and Radicals. We start with a figure that's a square. It says the side of a larger square is bisected by the vertices of the square that is one size smaller. What are the values of A, B, and C? And it says, hint, the hypotenuse of an isosceles right triangle equals the smaller side times radical 2. I don't think we need to go into all that detail, though. What does bisect mean? Bisect means it's cut into two equal parts. So in this case, the vertices of the square are cutting it into two equal parts. So what that means is this side A is cutting this side of the square, which they told us is 16, into two equal parts. So it says, what's the length of the right triangle for which A is the hypotenuse? Hypotenuse is the side that is a cross from or opposite the right angle. Um, some people refer to it as um, the side that's on a slant, although sometimes the triangles are drawn in a different position. Um, the hypotenuse is always the longest side of the triangle. So if this is 16, this vertical side here is 16 and it's cut in half, then the legs of the triangle, the two sides that make up the um, right angle, those are going to be 8. Okay, and then the next question says, in terms of A, what's the length of the legs of the right triangle for which B is the hypotenuse? Okay, again, B is going to cut this side, A, into two equal parts, so it would be one half of A, one half of A. Okay. And then we need to remember things about this um, isosceles right triangle is the, the side times radical 2. So for A, this would be 8 radical 2. For B, this would be A over 2 times radical 2. And then C would be um, B over 2 times radical 2. We're going to get into that a little bit more, so I'm going to skip over that a little bit. Because what I really want to concentrate on is this idea of a radical and an index and a radicand. Okay? When you see a square root sign, I'm sorry, when you see a radical sign, okay, that's the radical sign, usually there is no number right in here for n. Usually we just write the square root of 25. In that case, that means 2. That's really the second root of 25, which is 5 because 5 times 5 is 25. That tells you how many times you need to multiply, okay? And then this number under here, the A, is called the radicand. And when we write exponents as a fraction, as a rational number, that's the way we write exponents when we mean radical. And the denominator comes on the outside of the radical sign. Okay? If we have a numerator other than 1, you'll see we can write it as the nth root of a to the m, or we can write it as the nth root of a to the m power later. It doesn't matter which one you write it as. As long as n goes in the radical part there, and I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. N is the index that's on the outside of the radical, not in, okay? All right, so the cube root, the third root of 125, one number that multiplies by itself three times to give me 125. And you can do trial and error, okay? Now it ends in a 5, so I'm pretty sure this is going to be 5. And you look, 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 times 5 is 125. So the fifth root, or sorry, the third root of 125 is 5. You can also use your calculator. If you press Control and then the exponent key, you will get the blank on here. Um, the, in, the index will be blank, so you can put in 3. You can put in 3, and then I can put in 125, and the calculator tells me it's five. So that's nice. It works out very well on your calculator. But you should be able to do them without the calculator as well. Or at least be close to doing them. The fourth root of 16. What number times itself 
four times. A lot of times people say four, except that four times four is 16. It only took two of them. So it's got to be smaller than four. Um, three probably won't work, so let's try two. Two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. So the fourth root of, two, of 16 is two, because it took four times multiplying two to get 16. All right, now, these are the ones with the index, uh, with the um, exponent as a fraction, rational exponent, that get a little tricky. Remember that the denominator is the one that goes outside. So I can write this as the third root of 8 and then square it, or I can write it as the third root of 8 squared. Sometimes the first way will be easier, sometimes the second way will be easier, but it doesn't matter, you get the same answer. The cube root of 8 is 2, because 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. So you see it's taking me three 2's to get to 8, or take the cube root of 8 on your calculator. So the cube root of 8 is 2, and then I square it, and I get 4. Or... I can square the 8 first and get 64. Now, the cube root of 64 is not 2. It's 4, because 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 4 is 64. It took three 4s multiplied to give me 64. So I'm going to get the same answer either way. I can also just do that right away on my calculator, 8 with an exponent to get a fraction, you do control, division, put in 2 in the numerator, and 3 in the denominator, and you get 4. All right, but you do have to be able to switch back and forth, especially for something like number 4. We're not going to be able to put that in the calculator because they don't give us a number for our base. They give us a variable, g. So I'm going to write this as the fourth root of g to the third. If you want, you can write it as a fourth root of g to the third. Okay, I don't care which way, they're both the same thing, but that's the idea. Here, we're going to take the fourth root. Now, be careful because it's in parentheses. So this whole thing is raised to the third power. Okay, again, I could also do the fourth root of 64x to the third power. And the fourth root of 64, let's see, 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64 right here, so that's not going to be 4. It's definitely not 3, and 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. It's not 2 either. So it's going to probably be a decimal value, and we'll just leave it in this form. You can check that on your calculator, by the way. The fourth root of 64 does come out to be a decimal number. Okay, simplify the, four, the 24c to the 2 thirds power. Now, this 2 thirds is not outside the parentheses. It's not out here. It's inside. That means it's only on the c. So this is 24 times the third root of c squared or 24 times the third root of c squared. I probably would write it like this just because it looks a little neater, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Here, I can find the fourth root of 206, two, uh, blah, blah, sorry about that. I can find the fourth root of 625 because 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 times 5 is 625. And you can check that on your calculator if you want. So because I know this, I can make this 25 comes out front for radical y to the third. Okay, since I know the fourth root of 625, I can simplify that. Okay, I can't do anything with the y to the third because 3 is less than 4. On example 8, the cube root of 8, well... 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. 
So that's 2 times the cube root of k to the fifth power. Now, because the exponent under the radical is bigger, I can do something with that. And actually, you know what? Let me take this and write this as 2, well, I just had it, 2 times the cube root of k to the fifth. Let's make that 2k to the 5 thirds power. And 5 thirds, that's more than 1, isn't it? That's going to be 1 and 2 thirds. If you divide 3 into 5, it goes once. 2 left over, 1 and 2 thirds. So I could write this, okay, as k times k to the 2 thirds power. Because when I multiply, I add exponents, and 1 plus 2 thirds would give me 1 and 2 thirds. So this now becomes 2k and the cube root of k squared. That's pretty darn tricky. Okay? If you look at example 7, let's go back to example 7. This becomes 25y to the 3 fourths. I can't reduce 3 fourths, so there's nothing there to do. Okay? I can reduce 5 thirds. I can make it 1 and 2 thirds, in which case I separate the exponents. Okay? The k to the first, and then times k to the 2 thirds. Just a way to simplify a little bit. Okay? All right. We have man a manufacturing problem. A company that manufactures memory chips for digital cameras uses the formula. C equals 120 times the cube root of n squared plus 1300 to determine the cost C in dollars when producing n chips. Okay, so n is the number of chips, and they want to know how much it will cost, so they're looking for C when n is 250. So we're going to take our formula, and we're going to substitute in 250 for n. Okay. Now, I'm... Oh, I left the square. Oops, don't lose those exponents. They're really important. Let's say I don't know what the square root of 250... or the cube root of 250 is. Let's go to our calculator, and I'll try to find it. The cube root... Oops. The cube root of 250 squared. Okay, don't forget to square. Well, that didn't come out even. Let's see if I do the cube root of 250. And then square it. Let's put parentheses around it. Okay, and we'll square it. Well, shouldn't surprise you I get the same answer because I told you those were equivalent. They're the same thing. So that's not going to reduce any. So I'm going to leave it just like that. Because this is a money problem, they want to know cost, it would probably be helpful to have an, a, a rounded answer. So if you'll notice in our formula, we're supposed to take that cube root of 250 squared and multiply it times 120. So let's multiply our answer, so just times 120, and then add the 1,300 on. And we get a total of $6,062, and we're going to round it off to 20 cents. So $6,062.20 well, is what it will cost to produce 250 chips. Okay, carbon-14 is present in all living organisms and decays at a predictable rate. To estimate the age of an organism, archaeologists measured the amount of carbon-14 left in its remains. This is called carbon-14 dating. The approximate amount of carbon-14 remaining after 5,000 years, okay, after 5,000 years, can be found using the formula A0 is the initial amount of carbon-14 in the sample tested. And then how much carbon-14 is left in a sample that is 5,000 years old and originally contained 7 times 10 to the negative 12 grams of carbon-14. So A 
equals a sub o 2.7 to the negative 3 fifths power. This is our original, 7.0 times 10 to the negative 12th is the original amount, so that's going to go in here, 7.0, whoops, <clears throat> 7.0 times 10 to the negative 12 times 2.7 to the negative 3 halves, negative 3 fifths, ah, negative 3 fifths. Okay, so let's see. So, 2.7, 2.7 raised to the negative, uh-oh, three-fifths, I think. Three, I don't know why it does that every time I do three over five. Okay, that's what I get. And then that two-sevenths to the negative three-fifths, sorry, not two-sevenths, 2.7 to the negative three-fifths times seven times 10 to the negative 12th. So, all right, I did do 2.7, so I did do it right. So times 7.0 times 10 to the negative 12th. Notice my answer is given in scientific notation. This E means exponent on 10. So I'm going to make it 3.8 7 we'll go to three places 3.857 times 10 to the negative 12 right and that's it for sec section 5